In a recent video, I covered how to create stackable modals uh, with iOS styling for Stencil.js, Angular, and React. Uh, but the way in which this is achieved with React is uh, a little bit different than the other two methods. Uh, the reason for this is that with Stencil.js and Angular, we can easily use the modal controller to easily create multiple modals from the same uh, modal component. So we can just define a single my modal, for example, and just launch that as many times as we want. Uh, with React, the default way modals work don't really facilitate that. And so for each modal you did want to create, you would have to manually put that uh, in your template as an ion modal uh, component. And for most cases, that's probably fine. It's probably not often that you do want to create multiple modals stacked on top of each other anyway. And even if you are doing this, you kind of have to be careful not to do too many because it will start slowing down the performance once you get up uh, more than a few modals. Uh, but nevertheless, I wanted to see how to do this more dynamically in React, and that's a method that we're going to cover in this video. So the same basic idea with creating stackable modals applies here and the swipe to close gesture. We just apply the swipe to close uh, option here, set that to true. We set our presenting element to the current page for our uh, initial modal. So this uh, is a reference set up to um, the ion page element here. So we've got our use ref hook set up and then we just supply that into the uh, presenting element option here. Then for the modal itself, uh, we want to use the topmost modal that is being displayed to launch the additional modals, not the page itself. So that means that for our, for our first modal, we want to use this page as uh, the element to display the modal. But on future modal displays, we want to use the modal itself to display the next modal. So what we're looking at on screen now is more or less in line with what we did with say Stencil.js to achieve this. Um, you can see here that I have a uh, my modal uh, component set up and we're using that my modal component to uh, supply to the modal controller to launch the modal. But you can see here that we're just supplying as a string. Whereas usually you would think that, you know, you'd import your component and use it somehow that way. Uh, the problem is with React, we can't really do that because if we try to supply a React component to the modal controller, it's not going to be able to uh, create and render that component for us. So to get around that, what I've done is just wrap this in a web component. Uh, so I wrapped the my modal in a web component and then supplied that web component to the modal controller which is what you're basically doing in Stencil.js anyway. So the method for wrapping a React component uh, inside of a web component uh, was something that I found uh, from another tutorial online. So I'll pull that up now for you to take a look at. So I've got the article up on the screen now by Gil Fink. And I think this is actually a full talk as well, which is at the bottom of this video, which you can check out. Uh, so I'll leave a link to that in the description if you want to check out the full method that they've used here. Uh, it's quite a lot more complex than what we'll be doing. We'll be just be creating a bare bones uh, web component wrapper, uh, but it's definitely worth having a look at all this stuff and you might require some of that more advanced functionality as well. So basically what we wanna do is in app.tsx, doesn't necessarily have to be in here, that's where I've done it. Uh, we've just defined a class here and we've imported our my modal component we're using react.createElement to create that, uh, create an element from that React component that we're supplying. Then in the connected callback for the web component here, which is just going to run when it's uh, loading, we set up a mount point inside of the application. So where it's going to be injected into the application. So we just create a span element to serve that purpose. And then we append that, um, uh, rather we, we append this component itself to that mount point. And then we call reactom.render. And within that we're creating the modal, which is calling this method to actually create the modal element. And we supply that mount point. And now we will be able to use that as a web component uh, by using that class that we created, my modal component. And we just call window.customElements.define and custom elements is basically kind of like another word for web components. Uh, we call window.customElements.define my modal, and that was the, the string that we supplied to the modal controller here. 
So that is the web component that is being created. We'll have a custom my modal tag available now. And then we just supply that my modal component class to it. And now that that web component has been created inside of our application, we can just supply it uh, directly to the modal controller as if we were just using stencil JS, for example. So I'm not convinced that this is necessarily the best way to do this, but it was the best way that I could find so far. So if you have an alternate method for dynamically creating modals uh, with Ionic and React, or if you can think of a way of using this modal controller from uh, Ionic Core uh, more easily with the React components, I'm not sure whether that's possible or not, uh, but definitely leave a comment below if you have anything to add. And if you enjoyed this video, do feel free to leave a like and subscribe and I will see you in the next one.